currently operating pan and tilt with a joystick. I can also tilt in this direction, as you can see. The zoom position is actually changed as I am turning the joystick here. The focus is done on the knob next to, and when I'm pressing, you can see that I make major steps in the changes to the focus. And now if I press once again, I can fine tune my focus to get it exactly right. Press and hold, it's stored. We now have three presets on the PC Fly. So I'll recall the first one, okay? And I'll recall the second one, and then finally the third one. Skahoy's integrative technology can make multiple devices work together as if they were one. And from a user's perspective, controlling a DreamChip camera on a separate pan tilt head is a unified experience, while actually the hardware is two different things. Effectively, it means you can build your own PTC camera and get away with it. As a key feature, DreamChip's multi-matrix control is also available both through our PTC controllers and our RCPs. So there's really no compromise here. You get full control no matter what. Reacton Blue Pill also allows you to scale this up to as many kits as you want, and you can even add in cameras of any type without a hiccup. And finally, the Blue Pill extension cables is amazing since it can power and control both the BR Remote Microhead and the DreamChip camera with a single connection. So easy. To start this video, I suggest we look at how it's all cabled. We are controlling serial cameras and a serial pan tilt head. This one, this is the BR Remote Micro L head and this is the Atom One Mini Zoom camera. Together, the world's smallest broadcast PC camera but they do not have an ethernet jack anywhere on them. This is IS485 serial standard. The same is true for the DreamChip camera. This is SDI coming out of the camera. So control and power, control and power and video signal. In this case, the control and power for the um, BR remote head gets into this serial converter. So it has power and IS485 coming out of it. There's an ethernet cable here connecting it to our network and it has an IP address. And it's powered by DC 12 volt on this side. We have another serial converter right here. It's connected to the DreamChip camera. It has IS485 coming here. And with the supplied DreamChip cable, we are supplying power through a separate DC connector, but it could also come from here, no problem. Connected to the ethernet as well. Later in this video, we'll be looking at two other DreamChip cameras. They are in the far corner over there. They are also connected to a similar serial converter connected to the network. This one powers and controls two cameras. And that's possible because all of these units, they have a so-called bus ID. It means an identification on the serial bus. So this one has number one, this has number three, that one has number two and number one over there. So we are able to control multiple serial cameras on the same serial converter. Whew. Okay, so that's how we can do it, how we can control serial cameras and pan tilt heads in an IP world. And that's basically nice especially if you want to daisy chain cable. So what does that mean? It means you can have one serial converter going to this pen tilt head or this camera and then onto the next one and onto the next one and onto the next one. And if that's the sort of cabling infrastructure you would like to have, these serial converters are perfect. But we also want to propose a different solution, the blue pill extension cables. So these cables, the, the black one here attached to the blue pill is essentially an extension cable you can buy as an accessory to the blue pill. And um, you snap it into the blue pill, you attach it by some screws over here. And then in this end, you have a connector that will fit right into your DreamChip camera. So instead of this one, you just plug this one in. And with the blue pill, you get both the signal and the power, and then it's connected to the network. And this gets especially beautiful when you have the extension cable that supports both the BR remote head and the camera. So that means this cable would have in the version that you would then buy two cables coming out, one with a connector for DreamChip and one for the BR remote head. And if you get the blue pill in the power version, it has PoE plus support, meaning that a single PoE cable will supply power and signal to both cameras. So that's the cabling now Let's look at PTC control. To control our DreamChip and BR Remote combined PTC camera, 
we have PTC Fly in a blue pill inside version. And what that means is that we have the world's most awesome panel management software, Reactor, to help us configure this controller. And you see that I've already added an Atom One Mini Zoom camera device over here and the BR remote head. It's all set up, it's connected, it works. And the camera selector has been added one single device, the combo device. So this is usually an icon that shows a device with an image like over here. But today it says combo because this represents two hardware devices. It represents the BR remote head and the Atom One Mini Zoom. If I click the camera selector, I also have a chance to modify stuff like, for instance, the camera name, and I could fancy having a different nickname shown in the display right here. So instead of Atom One Min, I would like to see Mini Zoom. And it's now changed. You see, Reactor is just awesome and very, very real time with your controller. So that's great. Now, let's pick this camera and then let's see it work. So the first thing I'll do is to use the pan and the tilt. So I'm currently operating pan and tilt with a joystick. I can also tilt in this direction, as you can see. And then if I turn the joystick, notice that I'm now zooming. And at this point, I want to point out and send thanks to Dreamchip for trusting us with a pre-production version of the Atom One Mini Zoom camera. What it means is that the firmware at the time of this recording does not support autofocus. In other words, I have to focus myself. And to facilitate the lens control, we have made a special home menu. Normally the home menu on a PTC Fly controller consists of the most used features you would like to have, like access to um, the automatic uh, exposure correction and gain and exposure time and so on. But if you press the top of the joystick, you go to aperture, lens control, we have joystick sensitivity, zoom position, and focus position. You can see the zoom position is actually changed as I am turning the joystick here. And I can also use the knob over here to actually zoom in and out. So there's both the joystick and the encoder to help you on obtaining the zoom position you want. The focus is done on the knob next to. And when I'm pressing, you can see that I make major steps in the changes to the focus. And now if I press once again, I can fine tune my focus to get it exactly right. So there you go. We have zoom and focus of the camera. And we had also pan and tilt control of the BR remote. And from a user's perspective, the amazing thing is that this is fully integrated. Nobody on this side of this controller really cares that this is two different pieces of hardware. And that's, that's just great. Now, what's even more great is that you can also store presets, just like for any um, normal PC camera. So if you press the lower edge of this button, you get to preset selection. Currently, it's, it's all empty. There are no presets stored. But if I press and hold, this will turn green and then it turns up purple, meaning that I have a preset I can record. So what we want to do now is ready to just rearrange the framing a little bit. So let's zoom out like that. And uh, then we want to adjust our focus. Okay. Let's say this is good enough. I'll store this as a preset number two. And then let's zoom in over here, adjust our focus a little bit. Let me see in which direction. I think I'll enable the course mode to have bigger steps and then enable fine mode to get it just right. I think that's it. Press and hold, it's stored. We now have three presets on the PC Fly. So I'll recall the first one, okay? And I'll recall the second one. And then finally, the third one. Notice these presets, again, they're combining two devices. It's both the Dream Chip uh, camera and it's the BR remote head simultaneously. And from the user's perspective, as one. So we're really excited about that. And um, that's the main takeaway in this video. In the next section of the video, we'll add more controllers and that's exciting. But before we go there, I also want to show you a joystick sensitivity option that exists on basically all Skyhawk controllers. And it also exists in this case, even though it's a combo device. So joystick sensitivity is a, a way you can reduce the speed as you go. Or basically this, this value, if I set this to one, you can see as I'm pushing the joystick to full swing, actually, I do not have a very high speed on my pan tilt zoom. If I increase it, you can see full swing means pretty high speed on the pan of the BR remote head. I can even adjust this as we go. It means if I go 
to the left, I could reduce the speed with this one. So you can basically full swing and then you can adjust the speed while you're holding the joystick in full swing. So that's joystick sensitivity. Pretty nice thing. It exists for all our PDC camera integrations. I also want to highlight the aperture just next to, which of course is again a lens feature in the Atom 1 Mini Zoom. And with this knob, I can change the aperture in the camera. I can also do that in, in coarser steps. So, and right now I think it's, it's colliding a little bit with our um, uh, automatic exposure correction, which I'll disable, and then I'll go back to my menu here. So with this one, we'll see that it's not fighting against its own gaining function inside the camera, but we can really truly adjust the aperture in the camera in coarser and finer steps uh, as we want. So in any case with the Skyhoy PTC controller, we have spent quite some time integrating parameters for the particular camera. Dreamchip is no different. They have an amazing amount of things you can adjust in these cameras. And even on the PTC Fly, many of these are broken out. So if you press the upper edge, you can see that we are paging through various settings for this camera. There are basically like 10 pages or 11 pages of settings we are browsing through like this. So this is the home screen with automatic exposure control, gain exposure time, which is currently um, available to us because this one is disabled. We can also change the gain a little bit here. We can go on here, we have gain for red, green, and blue. They are currently not available because the auto white balance tracking is enabled. So if we disable this one, we can now manipulate the red and the blue gain of the camera. Moving on here, we have uh, black, red, green, and blue. We have offset red, green, and blue, and pedestal over here, which is going to be useful on our RCP. We shall see that in a moment. We have flare, we have filters enabled with detail and noise. You can make this incredibly crisp, but also kind of noisy. So those are settings available to you. We have knee, and then uh, we have uh, brightness, we have contrast, hue, saturation, which are some post um, adjustments. And uh, uh, this is the white balance menu where we can enable, disable the auto white balance. We can also um, trigger white balance by pressing this one. And we can also choose a preset. So for instance, I can load presets based on uh, uh, 6200 Kelvin uh, shadow, or we can go uh, for this one, which is an indoor, we can just trigger white balance on this one and so on. So these settings are typical. You will find them in, in almost all videos where we demonstrate PTC camera control. And it, again, it's no different just because we have a combo device over here. The next thing we want to do is highlight the ability to have multiple controllers connected to your Dreamchip cameras. And this is also pretty unique because the camera itself can only have one master, but because of Skyhoist technology and Reactor, we are able to connect multiple controllers to have multiple masters. So we have added RCP Pro, our new flagship RCP, and it's currently in raw panel mode. It's still a blue pill inside product. And the interface is uh, looking like this. I just want to highlight that we are actually not running React on it. It's stopped. And in the hardware manager, I have also disabled listening on the internal socket. It's listening on a port, which is this port. So that's all we need in terms of setup for the RCP Pro, and it will look like this. So what we can do now is to add it as an extra panel on the PTC Fly. So now the PTC Fly becomes the master that this one will connect to. Or you can say this is like the host, and this is the guest panel on the host over here. So you can see add panel, and I'm now discovering panels on my network. So the question is, if we have an RCP Pro that is known to be this one, and in fact, that one is the model. So I'll just select this. And you see it pops up right here. It's already connected. That's pretty neat. It also picked the generic PDC control um, configuration. And uh, that's all great. I want to test. Yes, I have access to the panel. And all I need now is to populate it with a camera. So I'll go in here, and then instead of adding devices that Reactor finds on my network or manually, which is another way you can do it, I will now go to device collection. And then I'll say I want to access the Atom 1 Mini Zoom, which is already connected to the PTC Fly. So I'll do that. 
and it's now my first camera. So on the RCP Pro, I need to press this one down and then select this camera for the first time. And then from now on, it will remember this choice. And you see that we have access to all the wonderful parameters in the Atom One Mini Zoom. So we can now set this one aside. We can basically hand that over to a PDC operator, the host controller that basically con communicates with the camera through the serial converters. And in the RCP station, we can now let someone else care about all the settings in the camera. So I want to show you that we have on the home screen, once again, broken out many of the same things, but of course we have more because we have eight encoders here and we have um, auto exposure correction, we have exposure uh, time, we have auto white balance here and so on. So we can enable and disable these parameters right here. We could trigger white balance if we wanted. We can um, adjust the gain settings of the camera. So you see this is accessible here. If we go to exposure, we have red gain, green gain and blue gain. So once again, we can paint our camera a little bit if we want. And you see the changes in the display here immediately. Actually, if you want to see on this controller that we are uh, doing this synchronized, then let's just go to this menu. You can now see on these two controllers that over here we have red gain. Up here we have red gain. If I change it right here, it's changing down here immediately. So of course there's full synchronicity, which is really a very important point in multi-master scenarios like this. Of course there is. Now, um, we also have a shift level where you can, uh, if you hold down the shift key on the RCP down here, you access the offset parameters, the pedestal. And the pedestal, by the way, is broken out here if we just go to the configuration and add what we still need to add, because right now we have um, a profile we need to add here that is called Dreamchip Atom One Mini Iris and Master Black Control. So as I'm adding those, we see that we have pedestal right here. So we can adjust the pedestal and we also have Iris Control on the joystick with very nice indication of the level we are achieving. And this is our Master Black that we can adjust on this parameter. We also have finer steps for that one. So master black, RCP joystick, push function for preview. We have ring here. The ring on the joystick is actually controlling the master black as you can also see in the picture right now. So these are very important features on the RCP Pro. We were going through these menus. I wanted to show you that with the shift key here, we have additional layers of functionality. If we go to the color menu, we have um, the color conversion and, and uh, color uh, cross uh, settings. We can adjust which dimension from C1 to C8 uh, that we want to adjust. And the multi-matrix is right here. You see, this is currently disabled, but I can enable it. And then you can use this encoder to browse through the different color vectors that you want to address. So let's uh, just reset back to, uh, to the red one. Then we have saturation and hue adjustment for red color tones. Now we have a color chart over here. So if you look at the red patch on the color chart, you can see that turning the saturation down to zero means that actually the red color disappears. And now I turn it up to full and now it's really, really heavy red. You see it on the on the Tesla down there. It's It's basically gray and now it's fully red. And now that it's fully saturated and I turn the, the hue, you see that I would be able to basically change the color of the Tesla to green. Now, this is Dreamchip's multi-matrix color control. And if you hold down the shift key, you see that you, we are currently running on the default 24 uh, steps division of the color circle. And you can change that to 16 or to 12 or even up to 32, which is uh, what Dreamchip's protocol allows us to do. So uh, please make sure that you check out the multi-matrix control with Dreamchip. They are very proud about this feature because it basically means you can match this camera up to any other camera in the world. Filter knee access here. We have uh, also uh, post processing features like brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and finally the miscellaneous menu where we have a uh, things like video mode that you can also change on this one. Um, if you want, this will only be affected if we press and hold the, the knob here. Otherwise, it's going to fall back because it's a special confirmation mode that is applied, audio gain, and so on. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the RCP Pro working as a guest controller on the host, which is the PDC Fly that manages all the control to the Dreamchip camera. Before we move on to adding more cameras, more controllers, I want to highlight the presets you find on the RCP because they are different from position presets. 
on the PC Fly, you could recall presets for the lens, the zoom, the focus position, the pan and the tilt of the BR remote. On the RCP, the presets you can recall are related to color. So for instance, we have buttons up here that will recall presets related to the black, red, green, and blue. Uh, let's set some values for this. Let's um, basically, we could reset these values to all zero, store that in bank number one, and then we can change this a little bit around to something that is easily recognized on the screen and store that on preset number two. Okay, and now if I press number one, I'm recalling the first settings, the all zeros, and pressing number two, I'm recalling the values I just stored. Actually, we even added a deeper level of presets for color. If you go into the color settings, notice that these are changing colors. This is very unusual for the DreamShip camera because they have so many crazy color settings that we decided to go for having two layers of color presets available. And you can actually customize which parameters go into each of these. But here we have a different bank, which is indicated by the purple background color of these buttons. And if I um, store the current state, you see right here, and then I will change some of the color dimensions, okay? So I'm just rotating this knob and this one a little bit, oops, like that, and store that in number two. Um, then I can now recall between number one and number two, so that's a different set of parameters that we are recalling with this uh, color preset in here. We think this mat matches pretty well with Streamship, who has so many parameters you can do. So I know that you are going to, to be an expert that want to utilize these things, but our RCP is totally up to the job to give you customized color presets you can store and recall on your RCP Pro. The next thing we want to do is to add more cameras. So I have added a Canon CRN300 PDC camera to our little configuration here. We also have the Atom 1 and Atom 1 mini camera on the far corner over there. They are connected to a serial converter we talked about in the beginning of this video. So those will now be added to the PVC fly and the RCP. And the first thing we wanna do is to take the Canon camera. So we can usually discover devices by basically looking at the network to see what is available here. We can also add them manually because it depends on the device whether they have automatic discovery. So we find the CRN300, we'll select it right here, and that pops up as a device on the right side. So what we need to do now since we added it manually is to offer an IP address to the system, and I happen to know this is the one that we need. We don't need a username and password in this case. It has device ID number two. We don't care too much about that right now. And there you can see the different models that we support from Canon with their XC protocol. So we'll save this, add it as a camera, and you'll see, yeah, it's connected. So that's pretty nice. It means that I actually have Canon control on my PC Fly right here. So I select this one and we'll see that we can operate the camera, navigate around. We can also, if we go into the menus here, change the shooting mode, the AF speed and all those things. So just like with the Atom 1 Mini Zoom, you see the settings here are unique for the Canon camera. What you've just seen is another main feature of Blue Pill and Reactor. You can mix and match cameras as you want, even a combination PTC camera with a regular PTC camera. So that's a pretty nice takeaway point here for uh, the demonstration we've just made. What I also want to do is uh, because going through the Canon cameras features is really not uh, for, for this video. There are other resources about that, but yeah, we can control the, the Canon camera. Let's uh, go and make a preset on it. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit and then uh, I'll zoom in. Oh, I have my um, joystick sensitivity set a little bit low, so we'll just zoom in and press this one. So let's just make sure that we have a preset recall. We can recall the first preset and we can recall the second preset on the Canon camera. All right, let's go back to the camera selector here. Go to the mini zoom camera. And then we also have presets on the mini zoom. So let's just check that one out. Do we still have them? Yes, we can go to this one. Then we had one that went a little bit further to the left. And then this one that goes further in right here. The next thing we want to do is to add the Canon camera, which is currently on our PPC fly over to the RCP. And that's really easy. We go to the camera selector in Reactor for the RCP Pro, and then as a second camera, we can now browse our collection of devices where we have DreamShip cameras, but we also have 
the Canon camera here. We just select it. And then if we look at the RCP, you now see that the camera selector that is available if I hold down the shift key has two options. And basically selecting the second camera will bring us to all the options for the Canon uh, camera. You see that we have unique menus for the specific features of the Canon camera. If I go back to the Dream Chip camera, the SM1 Mini Zoom here, I have unique features for this one, including we talked about multi-matrix, color dimensions, and all that good stuff. <laughs> That's really how easy Reactor is to work with. And I, I find it so amazing and really exciting how we can do this so easily. What I want to do is to add more to the RCP because these are two PDC cameras. And you see, we are basically able to, you see, control the, uh, the mini zoom over here and I can switch over to the Canon camera. It just works. So that's great. But for those two cameras over there, which have no PDC function, I still want them on my RCP. So let's just search those up and add them specifically to the RCP Pro down here. We need to add them manually. And I want to find them as models. So I'll just search uh, add some one. We have, um, let me see, add some one here, DreamChip camera, or maybe I search for DreamChip, that's better. And you see all the options we have. We have SSM 500, which is a slow-mo camera. We have the Atom 1 Mini Zoom, that's the one. And then we have Atom 1. So let's just select this. Yes, please. And then uh, I will add the second one, the Atom 1 Mini, which is on the far side over there. So we have additional two DreamChip cameras connected right now, but we need to configure them. And um, you see, if we look at the Atom 1 Mini Zoom, it was already set up when we started this video. And this is the IP address of this converter connected to the Atom 1 Mini Zoom, the port and the bus ID. I talked about bus IDs because over here we have two cameras connected to the same serial bus. And I happen to know the IP address of that converter over there. So I'll just quickly do something that you should also learn when you work with the serial cameras, and that is the terminal. So with um, a telnet session to the IP address of this converter, like I'm doing right now, I'm now logging in on the serial converter over there. And DreamChip has a smart little command. You type in 100, identify. And now it's going to tell you which cameras are connected on this bus. You see Atom 1 and Atom 1 Mini is bus ID number 1 and number 2. That's what I get from this information right here, OK? So I'll go back to Reactor. And now I can configure these two guys so I'll just type in the IP address of the converter. Sorry about that. And let me see, was it 48? Yes, it was. So um, typing in the port and then the bus ID for the Atom one was one. I'll just save. And now it's exciting to see if it's connecting. Yes, it's connecting. And uh, I, can, I can actually run the test here. So you see the picture of the Atom one coming out. I can run this test. If I confirm, then it's going to flip the image over a few seconds. And the test is done. OK, so I'm connected to that one. We could have the same kind of fun on the Atom 1 Mini Zoom if I wanted to. So this is really useful little feature that you find for many device cores that we can make such a, a check on this. But let's move on and configure this guy down here. So uh, we set up the port, and it had bus ID number 2 sitting on the same IP address, but a different bus ID. Save. And we'll also see this is hopefully connecting correctly. And now the Atom 1 Mini Zoom doesn't have an output, so we can't press the test button and see it's working, but it actually is. And what we have now on the RCP, if we hold down the Shift key, is we have four cameras up here. So if I go to the third one, you see on the RCP, we have the Atom 1 uh, um, with us, and uh, we would be able to, uh, let me see, what, what can we do? We can uh, go to the white balance menu, and enable, disable the uh, auto white balance. We can uh, trigger, if we disable here, we can trigger white balance on it. We can also recall some presets um, by uh, turning this knob and recalling some store presets of white balance on this camera. And uh, you see that we uh, do not have um, any control of the lens of this camera because it's not a lens camera like we had the Atom 1 Mini Zoom. And if, if you go in here, you can see the difference basically is this, that the Atom 1 Mini Zoom has a configuration chosen for DreamShip, the lens, and um, that's basically it on, on this one. Then for the Atom 1, we uh, have the same selected, but it's actually a little misleading because in this case, we should just choose 
uh, Dreamchip Pro class and Dreamchip Pro class down here because we do not have access of the lens on these cameras. That's what you buy Atom One Mini Zoom for. But we have access to all the other awesome things like the color dimensions, multi-matrix and all that good stuff, which is what the RCP operator really wants access to. We also have this label that we could change. So I could just add an exclamation mark here if I wanted to have uh, fun on, um, on that portion of uh, the system here. Um, and let me see, we need to uh, go to the camera once again. You see it updated right there. And then if we go here, we have the Atom One Mini, which was the fourth camera in my camera selector right here. If you wonder what this is, this is a profiles that are usually being used on cameras that has lens control on the joystick and the pedestal. And it's often when you have cameras that doesn't have the lens integrated in the camera where we have direct control of the lens, just like we have on the PTC head, then we have a different profile you can choose here, like a B4 lens. That's what you would do with the SSM 500 from Dreamchip, the slow-mo camera, would have an external lens and it needs external separate control and you choose a profile over here for that in this dialog box. So that's just a little detail and don't worry too much about that right now. The main point is that we have PTC Fly being the host of this guest RCP that is connected to it, it has control of four different cameras. Two of them are on the PTC controller. Four of them is over here and it just works. In this video, it just gets more and more crazy and we'll end it with looking at how the PTC Pro and the PTC Extreme could also be connected to these cameras. So these two controllers are connected to the network. They expose their IP address in the display here, but I could also search for them. And just like with the RCP Pro, I will now add it as a panel. And we see uh, PTC Extreme V2, I think, is that the, the one? Yes, I'll select this guy. So I'm now adding this controller here. If I wanna make a just a sanity check, I can just highlight the buttons to see, yep, it was actually the one connected. I want a PTC Pro over here. Uh, let me just search PTC Pro for all the controllers on the network. That looks to be the one. I'll connect to this guy too. It is connecting. It is done. I am highlighting. Yes, that's the one I want. So what I need now is to do what you have seen me do a few times already. Very easy. Just add new cameras. And we'll do that from our device collection. So it's really easy, like adding the uh, Atom One Mini and also browsing down to the uh, CRN300. Uh, so on the PTC uh, Extreme here, it's already done and I'll do the same over for the um, PTC Pro. So just adding those two cameras that I want on this controller as well. Um, and they are now, let me see, did we get the last one? It's all over here. So we have Atom One. Okay, let's, let's try it. But actually I just wanna check here if it picked the right uh, configuration. It actually didn't. So um, we need to modify this a little bit to have the combo device that we talked about before. So um, the first thing I wanna show you is on the PC Fly, we have the mini zoom here, so we can control the BR remote head. And we also know that we can zoom on the joystick. And you see that's happening right there. All right, so can we do the same over here? We have selected this one. Actually, no, that's strange, isn't it? Now let's go to the CRN5300. Uh, that one works, okay, nice. But why doesn't the Atom One Mini, does it work down here? Let's try the, uh, uh, the Canon camera. So uh, yeah, that one works, but this one does not work. What about the things I can change on the camera, like color, if we go to, a, um, no, wait, let's, let's take white balance and we have white balance uh, disabled. So let's just try to recall a, a white balance preset. Yes, that works. And over here, if we go to a white balance uh, menu on, on this camera, uh, you see we have different options for that. Um, then would, would we be able to, uh, to do that on this one? Um, we can also recall presets for white balance. So we do have camera control. And maybe do I have zoom control? No, yeah, I do, okay. And I do, okay, but I do not have control of the BR remote head. The reason for that is because to make this a combo device, like you know it is up here, you basically have to pick a configuration that connects to the BR remote head as well. And it's very easy because that configuration, which is currently chosen by default, is Dreamchip camera and lens. And it makes sense, right? Because it sees it's an Atom One Mini Zoom. So it knows that a profile with lens control makes sense. 
but we need to pick the one with BR remote added to it like this. And I did that now for, I think, the PC Extreme here. So let's try this one out again. Add some one mini selected. Do I? Yes, I did. And even if I go to my presets here, uh, we will be able to recall presets that we also have down here. Oh, they are gone at this point. Um, somewhere in the video, I have been uh, resetting my presets, but let's make new ones. So basically what we can do is to zoom in and then let's make this a preset. And then we go over here and we zoom out a little bit. And we also go to the focus menu and we adjust the focus of the camera a little bit and we store this guy. Okay, so we can now have, let's just check, preset number one, preset number two on the combo camera. Yes, we do have the same up here on the PTC Extreme and I can recall that back down here. What happens if I do it on the PTC Pro? There I have not yet yeah, you see, that actually only works on the lens because on the PC Pro, I also need to choose the profile here in the camera selector to include the BR remote control. And then on my PC Pro, I'll now be able to, I just need to choose this one because it needs to reload the configuration. I now have pan and tilt control on this one as well. I can recall my presets by a single push of a button. And I think this is beautiful, amazing, and think about it, we have one, two, three, four different controllers connected to the same devices over here, all thanks to Blue Pill technology and Reactor. You may wonder, with all these controllers, do they control exactly the same things? Well, they have different use cases. We talked about the RCP already. It had not position presets, but it has color presets because it is an RCP and it's associated with color correction, right? And it also had access to the multi-matrix in the camera. You saw how it could change the color of the, the car over here and the color chart. Those things are not mapped down on the PTC Fly and the Pro, but they are in fact on the PTC Extreme. And the reason for that is Skahoy divides our controllers into what we call Pro class and Standard class. And basically, and PTC Extreme is a Pro class controller. It's running on the same configuration as an RCP. PTC Fly and PTC Pro, they are standard class controllers. And the configuration that we are shipping by default do not include the multi-matrix on these two controllers. You can have it. It's in the system. It's not impossible. It's You can map those features onto the knobs if you want that instead of the selection we have made in the default configuration. But whether you want to do that or not, we are just saying from the Skahoy factory, these standard class controllers have certain features and others not, while the pro class controllers, they have certain features and others not. So that's uh, one distinction when you look at our PTC controllers that we have this uh, standard class, pro class, we even have light class for the PTC WIS, our smallest PTC controller. But I just wanna mention that. And it also means that whatever you see happening on the RCP is available on the PTC Extreme. Certain things on the extreme like zoom is not available on the RCP and obviously the iris joystick is not available over here, but you have a, a knob right here to adjust that aspect as well. Thank you so much for following this video. If you want to learn more, make sure you reach out to our sales team or our support team. We have also a number of materials online about how to configure these things so you can learn more details about that. And of course, if you follow us on social media, which you should, you will always get the latest Skahoy news as one of the first people in the world. And that's not such a bad thing these days because we have so many new products and concepts coming out all the time.